Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. This video is all about slider cards. I'll be showing you 11 different ways to make slider cards ranging from the easy minimal supply card to the more elaborate dimensional cards that you give to people who actually care that you made them a handmade card. Before we begin, be sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up because I asked you nicely. This first slider card is your basic DIY slider. You're going to need a ruler and a pencil to mark out where you want your slider track to be. And then once you've done that, you're going to create two parallel lines as well as um, connect the lines to make a small little rectangle or oval shape. Then you'll cut out this shape with some scissors or an X-Acto knife, whatever you have on hand. And you want the shape to be as smooth as possible because it, you want your slider element to slide very easily. My slider element is going to be a half of a heart and it's going to slide to complete the heart. I'll stick one half down with foam tape and the other half will be my sliding element to slide to complete the heart. I know it's sappy, but it's cute and it's romantic. You will place a penny behind your sliding track panel and then attach some foam tape to that penny. Then you'll add your sliding element on top of that foam tape to sandwich it all together. So it's sliding element, uh, foam tape, the sliding track panel, and the penny behind everything. Next you want to add some foam tape to the back of this entire panel just to keep that penny on track. Get it? <laughs> no really. You want to... Um, put foam tape along the side of the penny, but not directly touching it. You want the penny to at least move freely so it slides back and forth nice and easily. Then you remove all the foam tape. I doubled up on foam tape to give it more dimension and to let my penny really slide. I stamped my sentiment and this slider is complete. Super easy to do and you probably already have all the supplies. This next slider card features many of the same instructions as the first card. However, this time we're going to be using a die. Using a die to create your slider track, your spacing is nice and even and it also comes in a variety of shapes so you can make wavy sliders or arch sliders as well. I'm taking a piece of cardstock to uh, the back of my slider track just because I want to keep things the same color when my sliding element moves. Instead of pennies, I'm going to be using cardstock, matching cardstock. It is the same principle before. I'm going to be making up my sliding sandwich, if you will. So I've got my backing cardstock pieces, some foam tape, and then my sliding element will go on top of that foam tape to sandwich that, the foam tape, my slider track panel, and the backing pieces all together. Before I attach it to my back panel, I'm going to use a lot of foam tape. We're going to be using a lot of foam tape in our slider cards today. So you might as well just get the big old roll for this, the Costco size roll, if you will. Make sure all your foam tape stays on, unlike that. And then you'll attach it to your back panel, the entire sandwich that you made. Because I didn't use pennies, my sliding element doesn't slide as freely, but it still slides and it's still cool. I like it. Another way to make a slider card is to add a pull tab to it. I've got this fun volcano set which kind of ripped my paper. Oops, okay. Add some glue and it'll be like it never even happened. Except all the subscribers that saw that part. Anyway, a die in the set cut out the pull tab for me. Although you can do it on your own, it just makes things easier and I know it's perfectly sized for my slider track and I'm going to add the flame as my sliding element again with some more foam tape that's about the width of the sliding track. I'm just trying to figure out where to place my flame so I can see how high it'll go and you'll always want to test your slider to make sure it works and then I'll use this volcano to cover up some of the sliding elements just to kind of make it a sort of a hidden slider. And then I'll cut off the excess of my pull tab. Next comes the foam tape to the back panel to attach everything together. And try as I might, I always tend to put these things on crooked. So I just use scissors to cut off the excess. Now I'm testing out my slider again. I stamped on my sentiment and this card is complete. Another way to make a slider card is to make your sliding element spin. So just like before, we're going to need a coin. In this case, I'm using a dime because I gave all my pennies to my son to throw in the water fountain. 
Your two coins will sandwich the foam tape and sliding track panel together and that will make your element spin. And it's really important that your foam tape is like really tiny, like almost like a square or circle. That way your coins can spin, which makes your sliding element spin. And my sliding element in this case is a little ninja. You might have to slide them back and forth to really get them to spin. There, there you went. You saw them spin, right? And then you add some foam tape to uh, adhere your entire panel together. In retrospect, if I were to do this again, I would probably add the ninja to like a circle die cut just to help them spin better. To get some additional use out of your slider dies, you can put them in a zigzag pattern like I'm doing here. I'm just using a pencil to trace out the path that I want my sliding element to take. And then I'll run all of this through my die cutting machine. And I can easily create a zigzag pattern by running this back and forth through my die cutting machine a couple of times. Once you've got your zigzag pattern all cut out, you can use the penny or another piece of cardstock as um, part of your sandwich. You'll add some foam tape to that as well as your sliding element. And it's um, similar to before. After you attach that, you're going to attach some foam tape to the back of your entire sliding track panel and adhere it to a, another panel, your backing panel. And once you've got that on there, your sliding element should slide easily down your zigzag path. If you've got some circle dies handy, you can use those to create a circle slider card. I just used two circle dies to create my sliding track on my panel. And my painter's tape ripped off some of my balloons, so it's fired. In order to create my circle slider, I'm going to bring out the penny once again. These balloons are going to be my sliding element. I'll add some foam tape to it, and then I will attach my sliding element on top of that foam tape. Now before I do that though, I wanna add some foam tape to the middle circle of my circle slider card. You wanna make sure that the penny will not run into any of that foam tape, either on the inside circle on the, or on the outside panel. And once you see that it moves freely, you can attach foam tape to the entire track panel and add it to your backing uh, note card. And if all goes well, your sliding element will slide around in a circle path. This pop-up slider card is made possible with the help of this awesome die set. It cuts out your sliding window as well as some notches and other fun elements. And there it creates some score lines for you to fold You'll just have to create your own sliding pull panel and it's my panel is in white there and it's like three and a half by five inches. I'll flip my sliding window over and add some score tape to the back of that tiny little like rectangle um, that uh, was made for the score line. Then I will attach my pulling panel piece to that score tape and you can see how this um, this whole thing works and I'll just trim off some of the excess there. Now I'll add some fun decorative and elements to the um, pop-up piece of my sliding pop-up card. And these berries look so realistic. Bravo <laughs> to this stamp company. I'll flip the entire window over again and attach foam tape along the sides. And then I'll attach my back panel and then you'll see how this entire thing works. And you can put, you know, um, a sentiment or cash or gift card in there. I'm going to add a sentiment, but it, this pop-up card creates a really fun surprise for your recipient. Another way to make a slider card is to have it reveal something. I've got this awesome magic slider die set that created this panel as well as a pull tab and this sliding track or not really a sliding track, it's just a track. And then I uh, cut out a custom uh, piece for the background of my little reveal window. And you'll see that the die set created this little slit at the top for my, um, my pull panel to go through. Then I'll start building the inside of my, um, my reveal panel with these fun like underwater sea images, also from Lawn Fawn, I believe. This die set is great because you can, you can create like a reveal slider like I'm doing here, or you can use like a, use acetate and make a color sliders. There's lots of um, fun cards you can make with this die set. And now I'm going to add some score tape to that U-shaped uh, piece and seal in my whole reveal window. And then I'll snap my sentiment on the pulling window. And then I will, it, attach this like notch that uh, the die set also had. And then I'll attach the entire piece to my note card. 
And this whole slider card is really, wait for it, sublime. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Waterfall cards are now made easier with the help of this flip slider die. It creates your flip slider panel as well as some different um, little panels to attach to your flip slider. I ink blended my background with a cloud stencil and now I'm just attaching my little dragons to the panels that the uh, die set um, came with. That big T looking thing over to the left is your flip slider element or your waterfall element. And you want to fold along all of those score lines that the die made. And then to attach your little panels to the big T or the flip slider element, you're basically going to attach only the like, um, well, for the first one, you're going to attach the whole thing to the base. But for the other panels, you're going to only put glue on the left side of each little, um, each little panel. And that will make your elements flip. So you move on to the next panel, attach some glue only to the left side. And then the final piece, glue, left side. In retrospect, I probably should have used score, ta score tape, but the, the glue was already out. Now I'll just flip the whole thing back and then these two little tabs are what's going to attach to my card panel. So no glue or adhesive will go back on the on this whole element aside from those two little tabs. And that's how this sliding element will work. So I attach some score tape to those tabs. I'm going to put it on my card panel, hold it down and then make sure this whole thing works, test it out. Yay, and it does. And then next I will stamp my sentiment on there and then I'll add a sentiment to the pull tab as well so the recipient knows what to do. And this card is finished and it creates such a fun sliding element. For a pop-up curved slider card, you can use, um, you can create your own curve, but this die set came with like a rainbow design, so that's what I'm going to go with. And it creates these like pull tab and my sliding element, which is my rainbow, and then I've ink blended some clouds on my panels. I'll pull out the window die piece from the set to create um, my sliding window as well as a notch for my pull tab. I've ink blended my pull tab to match and the die set also creates a pull tab for you with a little arrow in it so it's really convenient. I'm going to flip my rainbow piece over and attach score tape to the back left side to attach that side to the, um, to the left side of the pull tab like so. Then I will attach score tape to the front right side of the rainbow to attach that to my front window piece. And I'll try to position this as straight as possible. Sorry for the flyaways and my hair. And you'll see how this slider works. Once you pull the pull tab, the rainbow, the curved rainbow pops up. I ink blended another panel to match my sky just so when you pull back the rainbow, um, you'll see that the background is continuous. I'll add some foam tape to the back of this piece while avoiding where the pull tab is and attach that to another panel. And then I will stamp my sentiment on there. And this card just makes me so happy because rainbows make me happy. We can all use some more rainbows in our lives. The state of Hawaii knows what's up. A really wow slider card is the double slider. With this die set, it makes things a lot easier. It cuts out all of these pieces to help you assemble your double slider. I've got two pocket pieces that I will attach some score tape to um, the top and bottom little slivers that the die made. And then I'll attach score tape to this, I don't know what you call this piece this eye piece because it looks like an eye <laughs> like a letter I anyway yeah I'm gonna attach some score tape to the top and bottom um, rectangles of this eye and I'm gonna set these pieces aside then I will trim some uh, trim up some ziploc bags that I have into some strips I will keep the extra strips in uh, within the die set um, for future cards then I will cut this piece to make an extra long strip for my double slider card. And this uh, strip is probably, oh, I don't know, like two inches high. You just want it like um, shorter than your little eye. And then you're going to attach a piece of score tape to the tape and let the other side fall over. So now you've got this strip wrapped around your eye piece. 
once you've cut off the excess. Um, I like to rub this in between my hands, a la Miss Kelly from Lawn Fawn, to make sure that this piece will slide really well. And next, I will attach score tape to the left side of the panel, flip it over, and attach score tape to the right side, right side of the back side of this eyepiece. And as for all my panels, I couldn't decide on which Halloween costumes I liked from Lawn Fawn, so I decided to use them all. Like I pulled out every stamp set that had a person on it and I put it on here. Except for the fairies. The fairies were too small. So maybe next time fairies. Anyway, so now I'll peel up that score tape that was on the left side of the eyepiece. I'll attach the I'll attach one panel um, to that side and then I'll attach the other panel to the back side of this eyepiece. Right along that right side there. And I'm sure Lawn Fawn's tutorial is way more uh, explanatory than this. I'm just going through the basics of it. Then I will go back to those pocket pieces and cut out some notches that the die set came with um, to help your recipient pull those pull pieces, those pull panels. I'll remove the score tape from one side of the panel to attach um, to oh, one of the seams together. And then I'll put the entire eye piece um, in this pocket by removing the score tape, making sure that everything's aligned correctly. Yep, okay, good. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once, people. Okay, once I've got this eye piece in my pocket and adhered, I'm going to close my pocket with the other seam and then I'll flip the entire thing over and hopefully everything turns out right. And no, it doesn't. I got a little white sticky edge. I don't know what it's from, but I'll cover it up with my sentiment banner. And then one final test to make sure everything works. And it is awesome. Look at all those kids. Oh, I love this card. Next, I'll quickly recap all of the slider cards we made. Some slide on their own. Some need a little help. Some need a lot of help. <laughs> but um, whatever slider card you decide to make, I hope you have fun making it. I, interactive cards are all the rage right now. And they just add so much fun to your handmade cards. They add a great surprise for your recipient. And as you can see, there are a lot of ways to make them, ranging from the really easy and simple to the more elaborate slider cards. That does it for me, guys. Thanks. <laughs>